Alrighty, let's walk through how to go through the IA outline and how to kind of put together this IA. So I'm going to present here. Boom, 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 boom. So I have a copy of the IA outline. And basically, what you'll do is you'll fill in this outline. So part one is what is your research question that you want to analyze? Uh, I have an example here. How does the specific heat capacity of a metal affect its electrical resistivity? Um, I have a, a, a past IA that a student has done where they did some stuff with LEDs. So they took an LED uh, and they increased the power, uh, input power of the LED, and then they measured the efficiency based on how bright the LED got and how much heat the LED gave off. So here was a, the research question was, how does the input power of an LED affect the efficiency of the light? So that would be what I would put down for this part right here. I would type that in. How does the efficiency, um, or sorry, how does the input power of the LED affect the efficiency? Done. Now this part right here, introduction. In the introduction, you want to do a couple paragraphs. And in those couple paragraphs, you want to uh, kind of answer the following question. Why did you choose this particular IA? Can someone use this IA to better understand their idea of, of what's going on? What are you trying to convey to them? What are you trying to explain to them? What applications are there for this IA? So going back to the example here, give you some ideas. In their introduction, um, they, this person just highlights, hey, LEDs are really useful. Um, as I've always been told in my school by my parents or people in general that you should no longer use incandescent light bulbs Instead, we should use LEDs due to their efficiency. In recent memory, LEDs have been described to me as the next breakthrough in lighting technology. So kind of like, okay, an idea of like why, honest, why, why, what's, this, what's the point of this IA? What are some real world applications? Are there some things you're trying to figure out uh, with this IA? So then you go through a little bit of background on like how LEDs work. Personal engagement, that's a little brief uh, explanation of like, okay, why is it interesting to him? So I've always been told that they just switch to LED bulbs due to their increased efficiency. However, I never knew why LEDs were more efficient than other bulbs. So then he explains, well, well in this experiment, how is he gonna measure the efficiency? All right, so then he does his research question. How does the input power affect efficiency of LED? So basically the goal of the introduction is to kind of set up the scenario. Why did you choose this topic? What are you trying to uh, convey with this topic? What are some applications? And you just kind of do that in a couple paragraphs. Background. Now the background is like, what sort of physics do you need to understand? Let's say someone's reading this paper and they have not taken a physics class or they've taken the very, very basic physics, uh, maybe a little bit of physics IV1 and then they, they dropped or something. So you're trying to explain to them what's going on because obviously they don't know what, you, what your experiment's about. Only you know what you did in your experiment. So you have to be able to convey some information to them to try to give them enough background information to understand what's going on. So that's the goal of the background. So you're gonna, in a couple paragraphs or a couple bullet points, um, you're gonna get some background. So this person in their background, they talked about what is efficiency. So he gave an equation for efficiency. It's basically output energy, over input energy, but he, he kind of broke it up even more where the output energy is really just your input minus your dissipated because the dissipate's not useful. So that was his equation. He talked about what the equation means and how he's gonna use it. Then he talked about how does an LED work? What is, what is an LED? How does it work? So he drew a picture or had a diagram about an LED. What is it? it has this uh, positive side and negative side and the, and the positive charges flow to the negative side really easily, but it doesn't work really well the other direction. So he talked about that. He went over um, the uh, Wines Law on how temperature is affected by uh, the wavelength of light that's emitted. So the, the lower the wavelength of light has a higher temperature. So that's the, this equation here. That B, if you remember, is this, this constant. Uh, then he talked about, that, that's about it. So the, understanding how LEDs work, what efficiency is, and how temperature and wavelengths are associated. That's the background information you need to know in order to understand his experiment. Then the next part is the actual um, experimental setup, the exploration. So for the expo exploration, what you need to do is kind of explain what did you do in the experiment? Like, so someone can like, it's like a cookbook. 
of instructions, like step one, do this, step two, do this, step three, do this. And a lot of times it helps to take a picture because a picture, think of what, if you're reading like instructions on how to, how to change the uh, alternator in your car, it helps to have pictures to kind of describe that. So I'm asking that you take at least, at least one detailed picture of your experiment so it shows how do you set this up. And then walk through a bullet point like, hey, do this, 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 this. This is what I did. This is what I did. And also describe why did you do that? Why did you do what you did? Um, what helps me and helps the reader is to sometimes make a table. What are the variables that you measured? How did you measure it or how did you keep, how did you keep it consistent? And then what's the uncertainty in those variables? So i kind of show you back to this example here. Here's some materials that he gathered. Um, does he have a picture? Yes, he has a picture of what he did. So here's his, here's how he measured the input power. Here's the LED that he, he actually had uh, six LEDs that he hooked up. Um, that was his, what, what he did. Um, and he hooked it up to a, um, he basically taped it onto you know, a piece of aluminum. And he just measured the input power given to the LEDs. And the LEDs emitted some light. And they also heated up the aluminum because aluminum has a known specific heat capacity. So he used a little bit of specific heat to figure out how much energy was being given off as heat. And that would be the dissipated energy. So he kind of walks through what he did. Here, here's efficiency, incandescent efficiency. It's related to this equation here. Power is uh, proportional to temperature to the fourth power. Um, so he talked about uh, black body radiation, basically. That's your dissipated energy. Then he compared the LED to an incandescent light bulb, measured the temperature, measured the power, measured the distance. So here's our thermometer here. Here's um, his light bulb. It, it got really bright and really hot. So you can measure the temperature. That'd be like the dissipated energy. And the brightness, that's like the useful energy. Same with the LED. You can measure the temperature based on the aluminum, aluminum and the input energy and brightness given to the LEDs. So he kind of compared the efficiency of LEDs and incandescent light bulbs. And that was the main goal. Uh, he kind of walks through what did he do. So he took some clear pictures there. He talked about some safety concerns, which is always good. And then once again, here's the table that he used. What did he measure? Why was it measured? How did he measure it? And one thing that is missing here is uncertainty, but he does mention that later on. So there's that. Now. Raw data table. Basically, the raw data table is like, what data did you collect? So here's some raw data. He collected the mass of the aluminum, the specific heat capacity of aluminum, um, some time values, so he timed how long it took for the aluminum to go from a starting temperature to an ending temperature. Um, he calculated the power. Uh, so those are just some general pieces of data that he collected. So that's what the raw data means. Qualitative observations, that's just like, what did he observe? And we could always tack that on later. Calculations, so he kind of skipped ahead to calculations part six. Uh, he, I guess he has his graphs later. So the, this is just a general outline. You don't have to follow this outline in chronological order. He moved around a little bit. So he had the calculations next. And then I think he did uncertainty. So he has some calculations where how you calculate the wattage, the power, um, the efficiency, and then yes, he did do uncertainty here. He explained those percentages are uncertainty, the errors that um, the plus or minus is uncertainty. So he went back later and put that in. So it's kind of all embedded with his calculations. So you really don't need a separate spot for uncertainty. You just need to include it somewhere in your paper because that is a big part, component of it. So you can see how he has uncertainty in these calculations. And then also with his calculations, he made his process data tables which is the next step. The process data tables is like, okay, what is your final data tables look like? With all your calculations given, what, like, here's X, here's Y, here's Z, here's uncertainty for X, Y, Z, what does that look like? That's the process data. So if it's process data tables, what are the temperatures? What's the um, area? What's the light power? What's the efficiency? So really, since he's comparing efficiency, his process data is really getting at that. What was the efficiency of his incandescent light bulb with uncertainty? What's the efficiency of his LED with um, uncertainty? So really, this is what he was trying to compare, efficiency of LED with uncertainty and efficiency of the light bulb, incandescent with uncertainty. That's your process data. It's your ending goal with uncertainty. All right, so he does a little bit more detail uh, describing that, and then, uh, one of the final steps is graphs. So he didn't do a raw graph. 
he didn't have any of those. He just had his processed grass. So he changed his raw grass into processed grass, which is fine. That's a, that's a good way to do it. You don't need all of your grass in there. You just need to have the best ones. So he has a graph about LED. And he, I think he has another graph about um, dissipated energy with the uh, LED. And then he, uh, does he have grass? No, he does not have the grass for that. Oh, here's some general trends for the incandescent. And then the analysis is the final step. Analysis, you basically describe what happened, why did it happen, how does uncertainty affect it. There's a list of questions you can go through. Describe what trends did you observe. Describe what impact on uncertainty had on your measurements. What applications are there from your experiment? If you had more resources, more time, if you, could, if you wanted to further, further investigate this, what would you do and why? What qualitative observations? And he obviously he made that in, in his earlier part, but what observations did you make that aren't represented by numbers? Oh, this got brighter, this turned blue, this whatever. Um, what results, did the results match your predicted, like you made predictions in your experiment, you set this experiment up. Did your results match it? Why or why not? So basically your analysis is kind of telling the overall synapses, the story. Uh, it's like you read the back cover of a book. What was the book about generically? Um, and you're given the overall details of it, the spark notes, if you will, of that. And it, usually that's about a page, page and a half long, which kind of highlights, um, he labeled his experimental analysis, uh, I think. Yeah, so very good. So you can see with, with that example, he has all the components. Now the final process, after you, after you have all of the same outline, um, like all these boxes filled in with the outline, the last step then would just be to copy and paste it into a paper, or just kind of read through it and make sure it makes sense, make sure it flows. Uh, and that's the last component is just, I mean, like step 10 is just like, hey, does it flow well? Like, are you communicating things in a way that makes sense? You're not jumping from this to this to this. And usually if you follow this outline, you'll have that 99% done. Then it's just like making those transitions between the parts. And that's what this extra writing is uh, that you can see in between some of the graphs and stuff. It's just kind of transitioning. Like, here's what this data is saying. Here, then what the graph is saying. So, there's your assignment for this week. Is it, it's, he's plugging along on this. I think a good goal um, for Friday is to have part one, two, three, four, and five done. Uh, so, part one's easy. It's your research question. That should take five minutes. Stops. Introduction. Couple of paragraphs. Obviously, you can go back and flourish it up and fill it in more detail later. But with the introduction, you just kind of start that process. Um, start filling in this box in for Friday. Uh, then the background. Uh, definitely looking for um, what sort of things that a student needs to know to understand this idea. Start filling that in. That should be a couple of paragraphs long. Maybe some physics equations or concepts in there. Exploration for sure. A picture. Go through a bullet point or describe the picture. So basically, the exploration is three parts: at least a detail, at least one detailed picture, bullet point procedure of what you did, like a, a cookie cutter lab, basically, um, and then describe your variables. Basically, fill in a chart of this version. What are your variables? What did you measure? How did you measure them? How, what are the uncertainties? You can always come back to the uncertainties later. I, you, it's good to keep track of them now, so you don't have to try to remember what they were in case. You don't get to it for a while. You can always write them down. Um, and then raw data. So those are five parts. And they should just basically like be started and filled in. And we can always go back and tweak them later. So for Friday, I'm looking for parts one, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to keep building on this. We're going to keep building. So there's our task for this week. Um, I'm going to basically give you both days, the majority of the time, to work. Uh, won't worry too much about uncertainty right now. I will go over uncertainty probably with individual groups as, as you get there. But one thing I would keep track of is like, hey, what did you use to measure your uh, measurements? What did you use to measure? And then keep track of like, what does that measurement go to? Does it go to the centimeter? Does it go to the millimeter? Does it go to the 0.1 degrees? Does it go to the one, one degree? Does it go to the gram? So keep track of like how precise is that measurement? And that's good for now, because we'll always come back to it. Like, okay, what do we do to calculate that uncertainty? It's not too bad. So that's it for today. Uh, have a great rest of your time, and I'll be here to help you if you get stuck on your IA.